I'm attempting to complete every single GameCube game, and I'm using a random number generator to pick the next game. Last episode, we were beating up enemies inside of a movie and played Beautiful Joe. And in this episode, we're becoming superheroes again, but this time from a movie. And we're playing The Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four was released on June 27th, 2005, and was developed by Seven Studios, that's what they're called, and was published by Activision. This game got boring quickly, and by the end of it, I just wanted it to be over. Before we get started, make sure to like this video because it helps out the channel, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any of the future games. Without further ado, this is my experience with Fantastic Four. In Fantastic Four, we're going to go through the new game mode to consider this one complete. If you don't know, Fantastic Four is an action-adventure beat-em-up game based on the 2005 Fantastic Four movie. But Fantastic Four is a long-running Marvel comic as well. Fantastic Four has each character modeled after their real-life actors in this game, and for the time period, I feel like it looks pretty good. Fantastic Four follows our four heroes as they deal with their new superpowers in the city of New York, and eventually have to deal with Doctor Doom himself. There are some other story points, but that sums up the main story overall. Fantastic Four is a beat-em-up with minor platforming and some puzzles, but the puzzles are not hard at all. The game opens up with the first mission of the game called Intro, and we're going to play this game on medium because it was the default difficulty when going into the mission select menu. This game can be played solo or in co-op mode, but since I don't have any friends, I played this one alone. We open up this mission with a cutscene where Dr. Doom is on the ground and three of the four members telling him that he's done and to give up. Dr. Doom freaks out and causes a massive electrical explosion and this knocks over our heroes, but Invisible Woman is still fighting when she yells for the last member known as The Thing, who's just a normal human locked in a chamber. Then it transitions into Ben when he was on the space station before they all got their powers, and we get introductions of all the characters. They have actual names, but I'm just going to call them by their superhero names because they're way cooler. We can play this game using Mr. Fantastic, who can stretch his body, Invisible Woman, who can become invisible and has telekinetic powers. The Human Torch, who can manipulate fire and turn himself into a fire human, getting the name Human Torch. And the last character is The Thing, who turned into a monster covered in material that is stronger than diamonds, and he's also very strong. Nothing really happens in the first mission besides the space station getting hit with radiation that causes all the story to get set in motion. We just have to jump around in our spacesuit and then turn these valves to reduce the pressure. At the end of each section of a mission, we get a final screen showing us our stats, if we found the Fantastic Four secret token, and any bonus goals for the section. So if that's something you wanted to keep track of, you can using this menu. The next section of this mission, we go through playing as each of the characters and getting to understand their powers and how they fight. We're trying to meet up with one another and escape the hospital. While escaping from the hospital, we have to hack into computers to open up doors, and by doing this, we trigger the robots that work there to try and take us out for being a foreign material or something. I'm not entirely sure. The Human Torch can use his fire to burn holes into metal doors so that we can move into locked rooms. That is his special power. Once we get through his section, we get a final score for this mission too. I'm not going to go through all of these, but just know that after every single section, we get one of these screens. Now we get to play as Invisible Woman, and her secret ability is to use kinetic force and hold down enemies. We don't get to see this right here, but that's her ability. This section lets us meet up with Mr. Fantastic, and it gives us the mechanic to switch between the characters. In most parts of this game, we'll be in a party of two, and we can switch between the two characters at will. Then at the end of the mission, before we move to the next area of the game, we get a boss fight, where we can play as all four. The last character we get to play is The Thing, and he's super strong, so his ability is to open things that a normal person wouldn't be able to, or just smash things because he's big and strong. That's pretty much it. He is the character that I always wanted to play as because he was able to take down enemies way faster than anyone else. 
we get our first boss fight in the game with a robot known as Ultrabot. This is meant to be super easy and show off what the team can do when they're all together. But the cool thing that happens is that we can do a finisher on bosses once their health gets so low. Usually this is the thing smashing them or stomping on their head or something, but it's always really cool. We escape and that ends the intro mission of the game. The next mission is called Brooklyn and it starts with some thugs about to beat up a blind girl in the middle of the street. The thing shows up to protect her and then we have to run down the streets and alleys taking out a bunch of thugs. We come to the boss fight of this area called Thug Boss. He's just a normal thug though so we can take him down really easy. This is when the game tells us about super mode which makes our character super strong for a short amount of time. Taking out these enemies is no problem in super mode. Once we defeat the boss, we change to Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Girl as they search the streets to find the thing. The only thing to note here is that I discovered upgrading our character in this mission. This game allows for us to upgrade each character to make their attacks stronger using points we get from defeating enemies, completing missions, and saving civilians. We can also use these points to unlock bonus things such as concept art, ultimates, covers, bios, and interviews. I didn't bother looking at any of this stuff, but it's a nice little detail for them to throw in there. I mentioned it before, but we can save civilians during missions to get us more points to upgrade with. We end up meeting up with the whole party and help save a fire truck from falling off a bridge using teamwork. We get a visit from Nick Fury and that ends that mission so we can move on to the next one called Underground. This mission opens with Mole Man attacking a subway station with a bunch of these mole monsters. And we have to defend the civilians until the big crusher shows up and then we start the next boss fight. This is another easy boss fight and after attacking for a while we can do a finisher on it. Where the thing pulls out his best macho man Randy Savage and hits a massive elbow drop on the crusher's head causing it to explode. It's pretty brutal, but it made me laugh because it's super out of place. We have to navigate the sewers for a while until we get to the main boss of the mission, known as Moloth, or what I wanted his name to be is Mole Loaf. Anyways, it's a huge monster and we have to work as a team to take this one down. We finally get to use Invisible Woman's special ability here and we can pin down both of his hands to the ground then we can run in with the thing and land some massive hits to his face. Rinse and repeat, and we defeat it. It doesn't die or anything, it just falls back into the sewer. So I don't know if this thing is just going to wake up and then come back up to the city and attack it again, or what, but it seems a bit reckless to just leave it there. That ends the underground mission, and we can move on to the next mission called Tycho. This has us going through a jungle and collecting cosmic samples for Victor, or Doctor Doom before he turns evil. We get to fight some giant spiders with the thing, then move into a temple where we have to activate a giant temple door to get inside, and then we have to fight some pretty nasty enemies with Invisible Woman before getting to the final boss fight of this mission with Diablo. I have no idea who he is but he wants the cosmic samples and he's willing to fight us for them. In this boss fight he never wants to stay still and he will run forever. Which is annoying, but overall he's pretty easy. There are a bunch of enemies in the arena with us that can get in the way, but the biggest problem I had was at some point my screen turned grey, like this, and I couldn't see anything at all. But I sure could take damage. It eventually fixed itself, but a weird glitch that took place while playing the game. We take him down with the thing and then we corner Diablo to capture him. He then teleports away and we finish the mission. On to the next mission called Museum, where you guessed it, it takes place in a museum. The museum is being taken over by mummies and we have to fight them to protect the civilians again. Eventually we make our way to this room with a pyramid and we have to fight the mummy king. Another super easy fight because you just have to focus on attacking the pyramid and once it's destroyed, the mummy king will just run away. If you try attacking him, he'll just end up recovering the damage, so I wouldn't even waste your time. We do get into another situation where we have to protect a lady in red from the enemies and the mummy king, as we escort her back to the main room of the museum. The AI in this part is so bad that she stood in one area for the whole mission and I had to walk back to get her after all the enemies were dead. 
It's so slow moving, and I just wanted this part to be over. After all that, we get to kill the Mummy King at the end of it all, so I guess it's all good. We hit him with a finisher too, causing him to break down into dust. We end this mission with a boss fight with the whole party, and this boss fight is with Horus, a multiple stage fight. In the first stage, he doesn't move from the wall till we lower his health down enough. Then he will run around the area with a shield around him that will come and go. So when it's down, we can attack and do damage. Once we get his health bar down, we get another cutscene where he grabs some weapons, and then we have to fight him in a form that attacks more often. Still, this doesn't cause much of a threat, and we're able to easily take down Horus on our first try. That ends the museum mission, and we can move on to the next mission called Times Square. In Times Square, we have to fight a bunch of shield robots that are going rogue in the streets. The only thing to note in this part is that until we get to play as the thing later in the level, there is a robot that follows us with a shield that we cannot do any damage to. So we have to focus our attacks on the smaller enemies and then move on. We get a cutscene where Doctor Doom is beginning to turn evil and he punches the inside of an elevator, which seems to be really unsafe considering that it might fall and get destroyed. We get to fight the robot that's been chasing us for a while called Heavy Mech. We can only do damage with the thing during this section, so we just have to get its health down enough, and then we can perform a finisher. Where we jump on top of it, punch it in the head a bunch, and then throw it into some cars. Then the weirdest thing happens. We get a cutscene, and the robot looks like it was just shot with a bunch of bullets. When none of the members use weapons like that. I don't know why that was the creative decision, but it's a little weird. Anyways, Nick Fury shows up and we get arrested for being superhuman or something, and then we can move on to the next mission called The Vault. This mission is just a prison break through and through. The mission starts with the prison security going down, and the Fantastic Four and all the other prisoners get released. So we have to fight all the robots on guard, and even put some prisoners back into their cells to help out. Because we're good guys, not villains. We make it to this room where the thing is being held. It's heavily guarded and we have to take out these glass sections of the wall. These walls have crystals inside and they're sucking all the energy out of the thing. So we have to do that before he runs out of energy or we have to restart the whole section. Once we destroy them all however, all we have to do is beat all the remaining enemies and free them at last for the thing. A bunch more of escaping takes place and then we come across our first boss fight in the vault. We get to fight a lion creature man that wants to take us out. This fight is a joke, and I feel like he could have been a normal enemy. Once we get done with that boss fight, we're thrown right into another boss fight with Dragon Man. He's a bit better, but not in the first encounter with us. We fight him avoiding his fire for a bit until his health gets low enough, then he flies away and we have to continue to chase him. Once we catch up with him, we're on this massive lift that is heading to the exit of the vault, so we have to take out Dragon Man once and for all. This fight is more of the same, but we have our whole party this time around, and the thing can make quick work out of any enemy in this game. Once we take him down, we're met at the top of the lift by Nick Fury and a bunch of robots, but instead of putting us back into the vault, he tells us that we need to help him ending this mission. The next mission is called SHIELD, as the organization SHIELD, and has us going into this portal thing. We have to go through some metal world or something. I don't really know what this is. But don't worry, we have some boss fights in this section too. The first one is with Anna Hillis. He's some sort of gargoyle looking thing. He's not that bad of a boss and even has some good defense. So we can't just take him down with the thing. However, when we get his health almost all the way down, he leaves through an invisible portal thing and that's it. We never see him again. What was the point of this? Just let us take him out and move on. Why does he need to run away? Anyways, we get into the final boss fight of this mission, the Plasma Worm. A mechanical worm that can shoot electric at us. This fight reminds me of Whack-A-Mole. He uses these holes in the ground to attack you with his tail, and we have to get to the one that his head is sticking out of and hit him for a bunch of damage. This thing is very fragile, and when the whole team is hitting him, it's super easy. That ends the shield mission, and we can move on to the next one called Space Station. The Space Station mission has us going back to space to see if we can get any information about our mutations, 
and then blow up the space station when we're done. We start the mission turning the oxygen supply back on so we can breathe. Yay, breathing! It's pretty close on time, but no real challenge to get there. There's only one boss in the space station, and it's called the Giant Plant Mutant. This fight isn't hard as long as you know what you're doing. It's probably easy if you don't know what you're doing, to be honest. But we have to destroy the seeds on both the right and left of the main body. Once we do that, the seed in the middle will light up red, and then we can attack and cause damage. Rinse and repeat this, and you'll take them down without breaking a sweat. We check the computers, can't find anything, and then we blow up the space station, ending this mission and heading into the final mission of the game. The last mission of the game is called Doom, and it's named this because we're going to storm the Doom Tower and take down Dr. Doom, because he's become full-blown evil now. We start this mission on the outside of the tower, where we have to hack the turrets outside, and they will shoot the robots that are coming in. So our job is to make sure that they don't get blown up. Pretty easy. Once inside, we get this really fun part where we steal control of the turret and get to use it ourselves, spinning around, taking out a bunch of enemies. I really like this section. Then we get a cutscene where Dr. Doom kicks the thing into that chamber from the beginning of the game and absorbs all the powers from him. He's back to being a normal human now. We get to destroy a bunch of robots while we're in this massive mech as Mr. Fantastic, and then we get a cutscene showing us at the top of the roof, ready to fight Doctor Doom. Just the three of us, because the thing is in the chamber right now. We get a bunch of dialogue about how he's going to kill us, and we can join the thing in the afterlife. The normal villain stuff, and then we get to fight him. This fight is laughably bad for being the main boss in the game. Mind you, this is the first fight with him, but it's still super easy. In this fight, when he has his electric shield over him, we can't do any damage, but after he begins using attacks on us, he will get tired and the shield will come down. Then we can attack freely until he gets enough energy to bring the shield back up. It's not an eventful fight, and it takes a while, but it's super easy. We then get the same exact cutscene from the beginning of the game, but this time the thing breaks out of the machine that he was inside, and we have to fight some robots in our human form, until we get to the machine to give him his powers back. But I just want to point out that I don't like this form of storytelling. Why show most of the ending of the game at the beginning of it? Then have us play the whole game just to go back and play the same cutscene again. It seems lazy. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below though. Anyways, once we get to the cosmic reversion chamber, we have to turn it back on or stabilize it so we can go inside of it and get our powers back. This is easy, but the robots are always trying to fight us. They don't do much damage, but they won't leave you alone, and it would take forever to take them out in our current form. We have to fight another boss called the Reprogrammed Security Bot, which looks a lot like the mech we got to play in before. It's not too bad of a fight, even though I almost died at the end of it. We come to the roof and Doctor Doom is monologuing still. I don't know why he was waiting to kill them, but that's a Marvel villain for you. Anyways, the thing gets up there and tells him it's clobbering time, and we get to fight Doctor Doom. We start this fight going into a finisher that lets us slam him and then we throw him off the roof down to a lower roof, and then we just dive down there and chase after him. The next section is more beating him up with the thing, but this time we have to destroy these electrical generator things because he can use them to heal himself not the first time we've seen a boss do this in this game but we destroy them and then we can get his health low again and perform another finisher throwing him off the roof again and then we chase after him yet again this reminds me of changing the fighting level in like an old mortal kombat game or something just a simple way to move the fight to another area without making it awkward we catch up to Dr. Doom and we're punching him in the face, and then he uses his electric powers to get the advantage over us. It seems like all is lost, but Invisible Woman shows up, but Dr. Doom laughs about she can't defeat him alone, and then she responds that she's not alone, and has the other two appear because they were invisible the whole time! Then we get to fight Dr. Doom as a team, and this fight is even easier than the last couple with him. We did have to beat him up until we get his health down enough to perform a finisher. My favorite part about this is just hitting him with the post office boxes. 
because it's such a goofy thing that actually does damage. Once we're able to do a finisher, the Human Torch and Invisible Girl work together to lock him in a force shield and unleash a full fire attack, causing his metal to get magma hot, and then he comes back out with full health. We can't do any damage in this form, so we have to figure out a way to take him down. After he does so many attacks, we can do a finisher on him. This time, the thing holds him down, while Mr. Fantastic shoots him with the water coming out of the fire hydrant. If you know anything about heating metal, once it's magma red and you put water on it, it will harden. So basically, that's what happened to Doctor Doom, ending the fight and finishing the game. We get another cutscene where the people are cheering us on, Invisible Woman and Mr. Fantastic embracing a kiss, and the Human Torch writes the Fantastic Four logo in the sky. Then we get another cutscene with Doctor Doom in a box heading to prison or to the vault, and the monitors around static out and then go back to normal, showing us that he isn't dead, and then the game ends. We get our final ranking for the last mission, save our game, and unlock a bonus level. Which I had no desire to go and play, let me know what that mission is all about. The credits don't roll so I just played the credits because it felt wrong without it. Would I recommend this game? I wouldn't recommend this one, I just felt like it was boring and there was no real challenge to anything. There are so many games in the same genre that are better than this one, so I would say skip this one and play one of those. But let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you want to know what's next, stick around, but if not, thanks for watching and remember to subscribe, like, and share this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Yep, we got our number generator, our GameCube list, and on the count of three, we are going to find out what is next. So, three, two, one, 184 is what's next, which is what? 184, 184 is... The Haunted Mansion, based on another movie. Um, an action-adventure video game, based on the movie and the Disney ride of the same name. I don't know what this is, but it's probably not any good. But that's uh, that's what we got next.